So welcome to Computer Toys of the 60s. So in the 60s, a group of technical people designed and manufactured four patented mechanical computer toy products. Okay. Um, I have three of them that I want to share with you. And uh, the company was called ESR, which they said stood for Education Science Research. Okay. Uh, the fourth product, which was called Digicomp 2, uh, was a big board with flip-flops on it and the marbles also dropped down to, to have it perform arithmetic operations. Uh, it was plagued by flip-flop errors all the time. Uh, I used to have one. I don't have it anymore, but I can show you pictures of it. Uh, later if you'd like to see that. So I have these three and I want to share with you these three products and uh, show you how early computer development uh, was helped by by the toys. Okay, uh, we'll start with the Thinkadot. Okay, Thinkadot. And basically you drop the little marbles in the holes in the top and it moves the flip-flops inside and makes the spots change yellow or blue on the face of it, okay? So we can play uh, a game with Thinkadot. Uh, the Thinkadot manual actually um, has a thorough discussion of the toy, which uses essentially base eight calculations as a calculating machine, but we're just gonna have fun with it today. Okay, so. One game you can play with Thinkadot is you can tilt it left, you can tilt it right for the starting pattern, and then pick a target set of final spots. Okay? So, uh, but a couple rules. Oh, and the, and the challenge is to make the final pattern that you choose dropping the fewest marbles possible. Okay? So, um, we'll just have fun with it today. We're not going to do any base eight calculations on it, okay? So um, we're gonna tilt it right, okay, to set. And then, um, oh, the two, the two rules that are useful is if you drop two marbles in each of the top holes, that should remake the starting configuration, okay? Also, I'm sorry, excuse me. Also, if you drop, here you do it. Drop eight marbles, one at a time, through any of the three holes, say the middle one. Drop eight marbles in the middle. And that also gives you the starting configuration. So we can use that to help determine how to end up with the target pattern using the least number of marbles possible. I'll be doing some whiteboard stuff to uh, show that to you better. Say, so, so anyway, we tilt right to start, okay? Now, Let's pick a target. The target I'm going to pick for you is to make the top corner spots blue and everything else yellow. So the target is to make the yellow triangle with blue at the corners, okay? Uh, you want to play with it again? Yeah. Okay. So over on the whiteboard, each time you drop a marble, tell me if you've dropped it in the left, middle, or right, and I'm going to keep a count on the whiteboard, okay? Uh, until you get the yellow triangle in the middle of it, okay? So let me, let me set this up. So we're playing a 
Okay. We're playing think a dot. We set it up by tilting right. Okay. And you can drop it in left, middle, or right until you make the yellow triangle. Okay. What are you going to do? You just tell me which one you're dropping in and I'll keep a count. Uh, right. I'm sorry, what? Right? right. Okay. Oh, it's all, blue. it's all blue. We weren't going for all blue. No. <laughs> all right. All right. Good luck with that. All right. Left. And right. Uh, another right. Another right, okay. That I already marked, or is that a new one? Huh? That was the same one that you made. Okay. The thing is, and you don't have to worry about it, is that if you put eight marbles or more in the same hole, when we count them up, we can simplify by deleting eight of the marks because it cycles on base eight. So don't worry about it. Do whatever you got to do to make the yellow triangle. Soon. <laughs> Yeah, the middle one makes a lot of changes. Oh, I, I have a triangle going upside down. Okay, you like that? We can suddenly call that the target if okay. you want. <laughs> so you made an inverted yellow, is that what you did? So that was blue. Oh, the, the top's all... Top's all yellow. Bottom two are yellow. Bottom two are yellow. Bottom one... Shush, I'm getting too much help. I'll just look at it. Okay, okay, okay. So, and since when you put a marble through, it always changes a top and a bottom one, there will always be an even number of each color in the top and the bottom. So in this case, there's four yellow and top and bottom. So we had, we ended up with that that and that, okay? Right? Okay. So we can apply, so your total number that you used to make that was six, six and seven and six more, which is uh, 12, 19 marbles. Okay. We can probably simplify. Remember if we put two in each hole it remakes. So we can add two and we would then get six and two is eight. We can delete eight because it's base eight. So that becomes zero. This would be nine which would end up one and this would be eight. So we cross out the 8, we cross out the 8, we subtract 8 from the 9 to make 1, and you end up with only needing one marble 
try it. Take the marbles off, tilt right to start, and drop one marble in the middle. Did it make, did it make your triangle? Uh-oh. No? Did I mess up saying which left right in the middle? No, the eight would cancel. You shouldn't need any in the left or the right. And you should need only one in the middle to make the inverted yellow. It, but it didn't happen that way? If, if it's, it's possible that I didn't catch the drops that you called out, OK? But that's the design for Finger Dot. Uh, when it sold in the 60s, it was two and a half dollars uh, from the company. We were long out of business. Ten years ago, I found one on eBay for 30 bucks, if you even find them there. Okay? Uh, so that's Think a Dot. We'll continue with this one that plays the game of NIM. Okay? This variation of NIM uh, is one pile of objects. The players take turn removing so many objects. When you get down to the last object, you can play so that whoever can take it wins or whoever has to take it loses. Okay? There are no hidden mechanisms on the back. Everything is on the front. Uh, except the marble trigger. So we're going to use 15 marbles. Who wants to play against it? You've already played, I think, some over at the table, right? Yeah. Have you played with it? No, Please come. OK. So on any one turn, you or the machine can drop one or two or three marbles, OK? What's, uh, what's the moral of the story? What are you trying to He do? wants the, you to move slightly sideways. We good now? OK. And you get to choose. You want to play last marble wins or last marble loses? Where's the marbles going to stay at the top? Well, we'll trigger them, and they'll go through and end up at the bottom. Those are out of play, then. What you want to work with is what's at the top. So I want to end with having a marble at the top, and I win. So you're playing last marble wins. OK. OK. So the only thing we have to do to program it is to put the flip-flop in the right place. And for last marble wins with 15, that's the program. OK. okay. The other thing is, if you let the machine go first, the equalizer that's in the middle makes the machine purposely make the wrong first move, so you might still win. Might. Might. <laughs> OK? So you are the machine first. Machine first. OK. So here it says machine, Dr. Nim. Right. OK? So all we have to do is start the marble trigger. OK, a little help there. And when it's done, it turns itself off and it points to player. Mm -hmm. So now it's your turn okay. to take one or two or three as you choose. I'll do two. Okay, one and two. Okay, now it's the machine's turn. It took one and stopped. You know when its turn is over because it flips the, the okay. player lever back. Okay, one. You want any more or not? It's no, up to you. No, no. Okay. Right. So we'll let the machine play. It takes one. Up, oh, it missed it. This, right. We have to let it go. It takes two and stops. Now, what we said it for was the last player wins or loses. What was it? Uh, I win if there's one marble left. Okay, last marble wins. Okay. One and two. I go three. Why not? Okay. All right. Machine plays and takes one. You have four <laughs> left. Okay. Well, I know it's going to use one at least. Hmm. Decisions, decision. One. 
two. Yeah, All right. Well, <laughs> this, this machine's smart enough to take the two. One. Oh, oh. missed it. Hit. Dang it. And two, and it turns off and quits, and it wins. Last marble wins. So as the game plays, uh, if you play a perfect game, you win. Okay. But if you ever make the wrong choice, the machine takes over and you're stuck. The machine will win the game. Believe it or not, that little piece of plastic is ruthless. <laughs> so that's why they put the equalizer in there to give you a shot at it if you let it play first. Okay? So uh, the, uh, the book that came with it has all different variations with different numbers of marbles for lots of last marble wins and last marble loses games, okay? And uh, we just played, well, we just played, which one was it? Last marble wins, okay, with 15. Uh, and then it starts talking about Boolean algebra, A and not A and so on and so on with the configuration of the five movable things on, on, the, uh, on the board. So uh, somebody play last marble loses. 15 marbles, last marble loses, you first or the machine first? We'll let the machine go Kay. first. Go to the side because he's recording. The machine goes first, so we do that. Okay. Equalizer will make it make the wrong move. <laughs> okay. You need all the help you can get. Yeah, no kidding. Here we go. So we'll start it. It'll take one and stop. It's your turn, one or two or three. Push the lever carefully. Oh, you got, okay, the two. drop two anyway. You want two? Or we can start over. Two's good. Okay. So we'll let the machine play. It took one and stopped. Okay. So there are 11 left. Okay. Machine takes one and two and stops. There are eight left. We're playing last marble loses. Okay. Takes one, takes two, and stops. Last marble loses. There are four left. <laughs> <laughs> One and two. Is last marble at the end of my turn? Last marble. Whoever has to take the last marble loses. Last marble. Yeah. You can take one more if you want. Okay. And obviously, the machine will take the last marble. So it loses. You won that game. All right. I don't know how. <laughs> but, uh, Patience. The you might be right, yeah. Because the uh, only programming is how you set the flip-flops at the top, okay? Uh, as explained in the, in the, in the book the, with the pictures of it. Okay, so, oh, we're doing fast, okay? We can play with this one a lot. So the best, pro, the best product that they came out with was the Digicomp 1 plastic logic machine computer, okay? It had three bits of capacity. It could count from zero to seven in binary. It was a binary computer. And so uh, the mechanism would move the flip-flops back and forth and change the readout, okay? Uh, the manual that came with it had 13 experiments or activities in it. Then the company came out with a program that, uh, yeah, <clears throat> a book that explained how they wrote the programs in the original manual, uh, they cost a dollar in the 60s, shipping included, okay? Uh, people that got the thing, I got mine for five bucks out of a comic book ad. Uh, Ten years ago, I found one on eBay going for $110. So, and, uh, 
And, and so that started at 250 It was on there for $30. This started at 350 from the company in the 60s. And I saw it 10 years ago on eBay for $50. And then this one I got for $5 out of the comic book ad, and it was on eBay for $110, okay? These are no longer available unless you happen to find them on eBay. But um, a company has produced a new version of the Digicomp 1 out of bookbinder cardboard, the stuff that they'll make a hardcover book cover out of. So it's a strong, dense, durable cardboard that they die stamped. And uh, I can tell you more about it if you come to the table out there. So the third book, people sent in programs and activities they had developed, and the company published 50 of them, and sold that for a dollar as well. Yeah. Uh, so there's a website called Friends of Digicomp, and their files include copies of all three of the company books. Okay. Also, uh, the new version that the fellow has produced has a manual with it that offers 30 activities. I have a book that I have had printed and uh, it's available for sale that has 41 activities. So if you add it up, there are more than 130 activities for the three bit plastic or cardboard computer. Yeah. So anyway, I've got it programmed for a traffic light controller. Okay. So that's what the red, yellow, and green lights are on there for. I need a sip of water. And I'm going to come to the front so I can see what it's doing. So in this case, the uh, zeros and ones are not representing numbers. They're representing whether that light is on or off. And for the program, zero means the light is off. One means that light is on. Okay? Traffic light cycles, of course, green, yellow, red, green, yellow, red, green, yellow, red. Okay? So right now, with all zeros, all zeros, yeah, okay, the light is off, okay, so we'll turn it on, start with, we'll start with green, okay, so the one at the bottom means the green light is now lit, okay, we should cycle and see it go through the traffic light sequence, okay, so uh, I guess I have to put it here, so it cycled, by moving the clock handle in and back out, okay? And I'll tell you a bit about how it's programmed. So we'll cycle it once. Green goes off, now it's a yellow light, okay? We'll cycle it again. Yellow goes off, red light's on, it's a red light, okay? Cycle it again, and it goes back to the green. That's what a traffic light's supposed to do. Really simple. Uh, so to make it a little bit stronger program, the, the, somebody sent it into the, for the game book, um, it fixes itself if more than one light comes on. So what are we on now? Green, let's say green and yellow both came on, which is going to confuse traffic. And so by default, it turns those off and makes it a red light. Okay? If we have the red and yellow light on, it'll fix it, and go to just a red light. So the traffic light controller also has a repair subroutine, if you want to call it that, built into the machine. Now, how is the machine programmed? It's programmed with pieces of soda straw, OK? Um, you put them on the front, and you, there's longer ones that are on the back. So as you cycle, if there's no straw blocking the rod in the front, the rubber band pulls it back. That pushes the clock rod on the back, and the slide action will make it push one or more of the flip-flops to a new position. So the input and the output are not the same. Okay? So we can cycle a few times, green, yellow, red, green, yellow, red, and uh, that's how that works. Uh, also, you can change the program by changing the uh, push sliders that are at the top of it, okay? Um, 
Uh, the book I've, I've produced for sale uh, has 41 new activities in it, all made to fit on this little six gate, three bit plastic computer. Um, let's see, well, let's try a new program. Okay, we've got, oh, loads of time. Okay, uh, I'm going to challenge you with a game called Grundy's Game. And so it only takes a few minutes to reprogram it because all you got to do is move the straws around. So where's the book? Here's, here's the book. Okay. And it's actually one that I developed, so it's in uh, my game book. Yeah. So we're playing a game called Grundy's Game. It also starts with a pile of objects, kind of like Nim does. But the main rule is that at each player's turn, the player has to divide a pile. And there will be coming more and more piles as the game progresses uh, into two unequal piles. So we're going to play Grundy's Game with 10 pebbles. And so if you were playing first and you had 10 pebbles, you could divide it into 9 and 1, or 8 and 2, or 7 and 3, or 6 and 4, but not 5 and 5. Okay? So quick program. We'll take that off. We'll put the uh, number card on. So now the readout's going to represent, yeah. One, two, or four. And we'll put it on here for Grundy's game. So, like that. Like that. Like, whoop, one more on there. That like that, like, whoop, come here, like that, and the final one like that. Okay, so that's the logic rods on the front. On the back we have A, A, B, B, C, oh, we need A, B, C, so we need two more of these. And it then has a program to play Grundy's game. Okay, so it's now set to play Grundy's game with 10 pebbles. So now the output's going to represent a binary number, all right? So, let me get the number card on there. Come on, yeah. Uh, so the top one represents binary one. The middle one is binary two. The bottom one will represent binary three. If the one shows up, then you make count it, add it together as part of the total. If uh, it's a zero, then you don't include the one or the two or the four as part of the total. So when you play the game, and there's 10 pebbles, uh, you will continue dividing one of the piles into unequal piles until there are all, all, a number of piles, and each one can contain one or two pebbles. You can't go any further with those because you can't follow the rule of unequal piles. Okay? So to make the game uh, a little bit bigger, otherwise 0, 0, 0, I mean you couldn't hit more than 8, um, I decided to make binary 2 represent 10 and binary 1 to represent 9. Okay? So, um, somebody come and play Grundy's game 10 pebbles.
Okay, so we have 10 pebbles to start. So water. You want to play first? You want to let the machine play first? I'll play first. I'll do seven and three. Okay, we're going to do seven and three. The input to the, to the machine is the largest pile available. So we will input binary seven as, let me get that back out, one, one, and one, right? Represents binary seven. And then cycle all the way in. Oops, didn't catch. There we go. So it changed the binary six. So the machine wants to take the pile of seven and reduce it to six and one. Okay, your turn again. So you're taking the six and making it four and two. Okay, so now the largest pile is the four, so we will input 001 to represent binary four. Okay, and then cycle once again. That doesn't make any sense, it went to five, it can't do that. Binary four. Okay. Oh, come on. Is, is that straw supposed to be there? Yeah. A, A, B, B, C, and then all three of them. Okay. There was a half clock cycle on the first round. Huh? There was a half clock cycle. Something didn't quite catch it on random hands, so that might have I think I've got the right program. I think. Anyway. Yeah. Let's try one more time. Input four. Oh, now went. To, oh, come on. Double check the program, huh? Grundy's ten. Okay. We have true, true, true and false, true and false on the upper two, true and false on the bottom two. Repeat. And then false and false. Okay, that should be the program. A A B B C A B C. All right, we'll give it one more tie. Binary four. Oh poo. Okay, wait a minute. Now let's. Okay, let's think about it. I don't know why I didn't do what's supposed. To, oh yes, I do. Look, some of the uh, front rods have become disconnected. That's what's going on. So we have to do a little bit of reassembling. So that's why it isn't clicking the way I want it to, the way it should. So I have to get that one back on that rod. Come on, come on. Okay, and this one's come off too for some reason. I don't know why I did that. Okay, so they're all connected. They're all in place. We're going to try it one more time. Okay, binary four. Cycle once, goes to three. That's what it's got to do. That's the only way it can divide four is into three and one. Two and two is not allowed. So it takes one away from the four. Your turn, you have two piles of three. Doesn't matter which one you use, and there's still only one way to divide it. That's just two and one. Okay, so that leaves the largest pile is three. Cycle one more time. Oh, come on, come on. Why is it doing that to me? And then come off? No. Okay, three should go, yes, to two. So the machine divides the last pile of three into two. Now the only thing that's left is piles of two and one. The game is over. The machine made the last play. You don't have any plays left, so you would lose this game of Grundy's Tent. OK? And uh, yeah, yeah. So if you let the computer go first, as I said, uh, since you can't do anything with a two or a one uh, to make the game a little bit bigger and more interesting, um, I decided to use binary two to represent a 10 and binary one to represent the nine. All zeros represents binary eight for this game, okay? So uh, to develop a program, and this is a good one that shows 
uh, the truth table or the, the flow chart for Grundy's 10 looks like that. That's all the possible plays for Grundy's 10. Okay? Mixed in there are flow or pathways that win as well as pathways that lose. Okay? Uh, so picking out the pathways that win, and it obviously depends on whose play it is when you can't play anymore, uh, the next thing you do is write a flow chart of the number changes that the input goes to output for the dividing that it wants to do with the largest pile. Then from there, you write Boolean equations for the set gates and the reset gates. Set gate takes 0 to 1. Reset gate takes 1 to 0 Okay, uh, for the three flip-flops. So you're limited by the fact that there are only six positions that you can put a program on there with the soda straws. So that's the constraint and the challenge of the Digicomp 1 computer. You can put a program on there, but you're constrained to only six places that you can put program tubes. Okay? Uh, yeah. So that's what that program does. Uh, my book has 41 in them that I developed. Um, and as I say, the, the manual and the cardboard version uh, had 30 more. Uh, the original manual had 13. And the uh, second one that they produced had 50. So you end up, if you're uh, adding them together, more than 130 programs that you can put onto that simple three-bit mechanical computer. I think I have the only computers in the showroom that don't need electricity. <laughs> so that's what it is. Any questions, puzzles, observations? Anything? No? Well, thanks for coming in. Have fun today. I'll be back in the showroom after I get some lunch. Thanks. Thanks.